Welcome to the Lewitt Studio. We wanted to have a space directly in our headquarters where we could test our prototypes in a studio environment. This is particularly important before we enter the next stage of development. Together with musicians and engineers, we come up with microphones that allow us to finish our audio projects with less effort. Giving us more time to be creative. We constantly like to try out new things here. Like this one time when we recorded drums with this totally ridiculous mic setup. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit overkill, but it was fun. We also record the material for our music challenges and mixing contests here. We record upcoming artists and the cool thing is that everyone has free access to the multitracks on our website. We also do mic shootouts and we produce our videos here. The last thing we want to be is boring. Sure, everything needs to be on point, but it needs to be fun as well. In the end, that's what we are here for, to have fun and share the wonderful world of audio. Fun? Who's having fun? I'm in it for the fame. And I'm in it for the money. Right from the beginning, we had an uncompromising vision to push microphone technology forward. When I came up with the shape of our LCD microphones, everyone said that's too hard to produce. Why don't you just use a tubular shape like everyone else? But the thing is that shapes always tell a story. They are inspiring and convey a special energy to the user. For our studio design ethos, we had a high-tech spaceship in mind. That's because we are much interested in the future of audio and we also see ourselves as explorers. When you're in a studio, there's always a specific vibe. When you're in the Lewitt studio, there's this unique atmosphere that has a huge effect on your thinking. It's almost like it's talking to you, go one step further, explore, try something new. Finishing the studio was very challenging and exciting. It's always interesting to translate something that looks or sounds nice on paper to the real world. As you can see, different parts of the studio are inspired by the form of our microphones. But the even more exciting thing is how these acoustical elements complement the work we do here. Our room had three main requirements. It will be used as a critical listening control room for mixing, mastering and testing equipment. We also need to use it as a recording space and for content production as well. The thing is, we only have one room, so we decided to give priority to the listening aspect as we can always add reverb to our recording. But getting rid of it is always a pain. That's true. Critical listening spaces or control rooms typically have short reverberation times and linear frequency responses. They try to minimize early reflections in the listening area. Recording spaces, on the other hand, need to sound livelier. They need to have a low noise floor, be well isolated and offer enough space to record a band. We also need to use the space for content creation, which is why we decided for a distinctive backdrop. The room is pretty big, it's about 50 square meters and 180 cubic meters, and when it's untreated, it sounds very boomy. The reverberation times are long, lasting up to 4 seconds at lower frequencies. Such acoustic environments are not good for critical listening or recording. Once again, I'm asking for more reverb! <laughs> Alright, so what did we do to fix this? So, here we have an example of broadband porous absorption. It's basically a huge bass trap filled with raw cool and you might know it as a dead wall. This one is about half a meter, 60 centimeters thick and it pretty much kills all the reflections coming from the room. So if I talk into this, nothing is coming back to me. One of the interesting acoustic designs in the studio is the use of resonant or tuned panels here in the steel wall. Not only do they fulfill a nice aesthetic function, they also work to dampen energy in the low mids region of 500 to 800 hertz. We let these panels decay in acid and rain. Sounds like wood stuff. A bit, yeah. And then seal them to give them their distinct look. Fun fact, panel resonators work mechanically by utilizing a mass spring system. Behind these traps, we actually have some panel absorbers in the corners. They also feature a steel swinging membrane. They have a lot more mass than the ones we saw before, 
and this extends the working range to much lower frequencies. Corners in general are hotspots for pressure buildups. And all room modes actually terminate there. Fun fact, the unit of absorption is called Sabine, or as we say in German, Sabine. Our diffusorbers utilize both broadband absorption and diffusion. The design is based on the maximum length sequence. They use the MLS to take advantage of a treatment method known as amplitude phase grating, which is actually a combination of both reflective and observative features. The diffusive element is based on a binary amplitude diffuser model. They are filled with polyester fibers and are particularly effective in the mids and highs. The hexagons have different amounts of open surface area on the front panel to define how much they reflect or absorb. Mm -hmm. Nerd fact, the MLS sequence has its roots in Chinese remainder theorem. Tai bang le! After extensively designing an acoustic treatment plan, we thought, why stop there? Our sound system underwent more than 200 discrete acoustic measurements in order to optimize the placement of our sweet spot and monitoring position. It is a passive system designed by local engineer here in Vienna, David Heigner. The AES standard for reverberation times in control rooms is 300 milliseconds. For recording, on the other hand, rooms are a bit livelier and have a slightly longer reverb at around 600 milliseconds. The question is where to compromise. In the end, we settled more for a control room and aimed for a decay of 300 milliseconds across the spectrum. We even achieved this down to 50 Hz. As you can hear, the room is really well isolated. And we landed at a noise floor of around 20 dBA. We had to make a bit of a compromise on our reflection-free zone as we did want to have a studio desk. From an acoustical standpoint, having no desk is much better, but it's no fun to work without one. And our first reflection points have been treated really well. Thanks for watching. If you have questions regarding our studio, drop a comment below. Until next time, make, make yourself, yourself heard. heard.